So let's look at how Bob and Dallas can create a secure tunnel between the, themselves and for Eve not to be able to view any of the uh, contents of the data with inside that tunnel. So for this, we typically need what's called a key exchange method. And this is where Bob and Alice can create the same encryption key without Eve being able to discover what that key is. The most typical method that we use is elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, derived from the Diffie-Hellman method, but using elliptic curve methods. And the E stands for ephemeral. That means that we create a unique key each time and a hack of any of the keys will not breach the previous keys or the ones that follow. Then we'll find if we want to stop uh, Eve from pretending to be Bob and Alice, we create an RSA signature. So we're using key exchange and we're also using a signature method to be able to prove that Bob is Bob and Alice is Alice. So let's look at what a TLS session looks like. So here is Alice, and Alice is a website. With this, Alice has a public key, and it will be that public key that she uses to prove herself to Bob. Bob is the client in this case. But along with this public key, Alice also has a private or secret key. So the public key proves her identity. The private key is used to sign data, which is then proved by the public key. The keys can work together. We can encrypt with the public key and decrypt with the private, or we can encrypt with the private and decrypt with the public. In signing, what we'll do is that we'll sign with the private and then we'll prove with the public key. So the objective is to create a tunnel, secure tunnel between Bob and Alice, and which is encrypted with typically a symmetric key. So Bob and Alice will end up with the same symmetric key at the end of it, and will encrypt the data into the tunnel with that key and decrypt with the same key. And hopefully Eve will not know what that key is, even though she's been listening to the communication between Bob and Alice. So we need to protect against uh, Eve from breaking the tunnel and listening to the communications in between. When we connect with TLS, we connect to port 443 TCP and then the client sends a client hello. This contains this, all the cipher suites that Bob wants to use. Then the server selects one of those cipher suites and sends back a server hello to Bob with the cipher suite that the server wants alongside the certificate with the public key. If the public key has been signed by an entity that Bob trusts, he will trust the public key. So the things we need to negotiate uh, between Bob and Alice for the tunnel is obviously the symmetric key method that's going to be used. Typically, that is AES or ChaCha20, but we can use other symmetric keys in some cases, such as 3DES and RC4. RC2. And this can be 128 bit or 256 bit uh, AES or Cha Cha 20. The second thing we need to negotiate is the hashing method. This allows us to keep the integrity of the data. So typically we will use SHA 256 or SHA 1, which is 160 bit. Uh, hashing method that isn't used that much. 
we probably will be using SHA-256 or above. And the last thing is the key exchange method that we're going to use. And there's three main methods here. The first is plain old Diffie-Hellman ephemeral. The second is to use elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. And the third is to use RSA to, to exchange the key. With this, we use Alice's public key to encrypt the symmetric key and then send that back and then Alice will decrypt that with a private key. This is not a good method and has been dropped in TLS 1.3 because a long-term uh, hack of the private key of Alice can cause all of the keys to be revealed. So we typically only use ephemeral uh, methods and not RSA. So those are the three things that we need to do. But we also need to make sure that Eve doesn't get in the middle. So we typically use RSA or ECDSA for the signing of the keys that get passed back and forward. So we're using uh, both a key exchange method and a signing method to make sure that we authenticate the session. So let's have a look at a typical or an example capture from a website. So we use this paper here, which is quite uh, up to date, and it collected uh, TLS sessions from two main websites. What we see here is the key exchange method, the symmetric key method, and the hashing method. So we have elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman uh, ephemeral with RSA signatures. We have 128-bit AES with GCM mode, very typical mode, and SHA-256. Sometimes we get ECDS. So ECDS is an elliptic curve signing mode that's using Bitcoin and also Ethereum. But we can see it's not very popular so only about 10% of the websites were using, or 9% were using elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman signing. The majority are using RSA. And the reason for that is that most of the websites on the, on the web uh, use RSA keys to prove themselves. So when you click on the little green bar at the top to see the certificate, you'll probably find in most cases, it is an RSA public key that's on the site and not so often will it be an elliptic curve public key. So we can see here that most of the connections are RSA uh, signed ones. Here's one that's just using Diffie-Hellman. But most of all, virtually all of them are elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman ephemeral and we either get RSA or ECDSA. So what we'll do is that we'll look only at ECDHE with RSA because it's by far the most popular method of key exchange. So the first method, the first key exchange method that was developed was the Diffie-Hellman method. And with this, we have an agreed share of a generator value, typically two or five, and a large prime number, typically over 1,000 bits long. This is agreed between Bob and Alice. Then Alice computes G to the power of A, and A is a number between one and P minus one, a random number. And then, because of the difficulty of discrete logs, it's not possible to find out the value of A, knowing G, A and P. So she passes that value to Bob. Bob does the same, does his computation, passes his value, and then uh, we will take Bob's value, raise it to the power of A. And because of the rules of logs, we end up with G to the power of AB, mod P. And Bob will take A that he got from Alice, raise it to the power of B, 
and get the same shared key. So the problem with this method is that E could be in, the, in between and negotiate values between Bob and Alice and Bob and Alice would never actually know that the values they were receiving were coming from Eve and not from um, the other side. Unfortunately, the size of the prime number has increased, so we need at least uh, a thousand bits and more to do our discrete log calculations to be secure. A much better solution is elliptic curve methods, which have a curve. If you're interested, um, it uses a curve such as this, e plus b, uh, y squared is equal to x cubed, uh, ax plus b mod of a prime number. And the advantage with elliptic curve is that that prime number is only possibly about 256 bits long. It varies in size, but uh, the Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, curve is only 256 bits long. So it's, it's much smaller than our big prime numbers we used in discrete logs. A typical curve is sept 256k1, and that's used in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So with this, uh, what we do is that we have a base point G, an X and a Y value, and we have a random value A. So we add G A times, and we end up with another point on the curve, which we can represent as A times G, but it's actually G added to itself A times. And it's a very efficient operation in the elliptic curve. This is a point, an X, Y point. This is a scalar value. This is a point. So if this is 256 bits long, this is 512 bits long. So we take AG to create A, and B is B times G. Then, rather than using uh, ex ex exponentials, which is a more uh, computational expensive uh, operation, we can use multiplications, and we end up with ABG, uh, as our point that both Bob and Alice uh, share. Then we can put it through an HMAC key derivation function to create the end key that Bob and Alice are going to use. Again, the problem is, is that Eve could be in the middle and we don't know if she's the one that's communicating with Bob and Alice and breaking the tunnel by creating two encryption keys. So let's solve this problem. And the way it's solved on the internet is to use elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman ephemeral with RSA signing. With this, we have two long, we have long-term key pairs, typically either RSA or elliptic curve ones. We will sign for RSA uh, signatures with the RSA key pair or use ECDSA for the elliptic curve key pairs. And it's the same again, we just use generate the same values, but this time for our X and our Y value, we'll take a hash of that, and then we'll use a private key to create a signature. Then that's sent over, and Bob will check the hash of the point, and then use the public key to be able to decrypt the signature and check the hash values are still the same. In this way, he will know that it was Alice who sent the points because only she can have the private key associated with the public key. And if we want mutual authentication, we can authenticate on both ways. But most of the time on the internet, it's really the client uh, the server authenticating itself to the client. So again, we end up with the same key. So with RSA, we generate two prime numbers. If these are 100, 512 bits long, we end up with a 1,000-bit, uh, 1,024-bit modulus. Then we take the value of phi, and only if we know P and Q can we calculate phi, P minus one times Q minus one. Then we pick E, typically E is that value, and we then take the inverse mod of E mod phi to calculate d, our private exponent. So our 
private key becomes D and N, and our public key becomes E and N. N is the modulus. To create the signature, what we do is that we take our value, in this case it's the hash of the X and Y point, and then we raise it to the power of D, our private exponent, and then take mod N. And then on the other side to check, we'll take what we receive, raise it to the power of E, take mod N, and we should get back our message, or in this case, the hash of the points. So in this way, we can actually create a signature for the point, and then we can prove it on the other side. So that Bob will be able to prove that it was Alice who sent the, the, the A value correctly. If Eve tries to do it, then the, the, uh, the signing will not tally. So here is some code. Uh, we generate N, E and D for Bob and Alice. We generate their points, uh, B times G and A times G. And then we hash the public point and then create a signature for it using the hash, the N value and the private exponent. After that, we can then verify uh, the the, high, the uh, signature. And if that's verified, we can go ahead and we can actually create our shared key. So let's see if we can see our example here. So we'll take 256-bit and you see keys. So here is the uh, public exponent private exponent and the modulus. So this is the Bob's key pair. This is Alice's key pair. And this is the elliptic curve scalar value for A. And here is the elliptic curve point that she will pass to, B, to Bob. Same again, Bob has this private uh, key value, the B, and then this is the BG value. We check the signatures to make sure they work. And in the end, hopefully, fingers crossed, they will end up at the same uh, point. We will then put this into a key derivation function to be able to, sh to generate a shared key. Okay, the code's quite simple. Generate P and Q randomly. Calculate the modulus. Calculate phi. There's E. We calculate our D value, and that's our key. When we want to sign, it's the message to the power of D mod n, and then when we want to uh, check, it's m to the power of e, mod then we just check the decrypted value is the same as the hash value of the point. We want to hash the x and y points, we just take two values here, and we do an update on our hash, and that will create our overall hash of the, of the point. Okay, so that's the, that's the, uh, example there with a sample run okay so there's a sample run that we have that i showed there with all the different keys okay so that's been an outline of elliptic curve diffie hellman ephemeral with rsa thank you